This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and then made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. And from that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who's called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he, as he went on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, at the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. And so, Heavenly Father, as we come to your word, we pray that we would hear not just the words of men, but the words of God. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. I want to take that as my text this morning from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, beginning at verse 12. If you're making use of the Pew Bible, you can find that text on page 962. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, and beginning at verse 12. And this morning I want to talk about Jesus the light. Jesus the light, in particular Jesus the light that delivers from darkness and shows us the way. Jesus the light who delivers from darkness and shows us the way. And so firstly then, Jesus the light who delivers us from darkness darkness. Indeed, notice again, verses, beginning at verse 12, and it says, and, and, and uh, when Jesus had heard that John had been arrested, it says John the Baptist, Jesus withdrew into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he went and he lived in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might finally be fulfilled. And Isaiah said, and the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. And for those dwelling in the region of the shadow of death, on them light has dawned. And so Jesus is the light that delivers from darkness. And certainly this is what Jesus was doing in the Galilee, in his ministry here toward the beginning of his ministry, delivering people from spiritual darkness. Now, the interesting thing is the reasons why, I suppose, uh, that Jesus ended up in the Galilee in the first place. Uh, one reason seemingly was purely circumstantial. And that was to escape the heat, as Matthew describes it in, the, in Judea. Indeed, notice again verse 12. Now, when Jesus heard that John, that is John the Baptist, was, had been arrested, he withdrew. <laughs> he left the area and went to the Galilee. Indeed, Jesus uh, was in Judea, that is in the southern part of Palestine, that's where John the Baptist was having his ministry on the River Jordan, baptizing people and preaching. In fact, uh, maybe he was uh, preaching a little uh, too much. At least that was what the Herods thought. 
because he was uh, saying publicly that uh, Herod Antipas's marriage relationship or arrangement was not according to God's will and according to God's law. And that's, of course, as you may know, what got him arrested. But there he was baptizing at the Jordan River, and, and Jesus was in Judea. In fact, it was in Judea and at the Jordan River that John the Baptist baptized Jesus. And then it was in Judea, in the Judean wilderness, where Jesus fasted and prayed for 40 days and was tempted by the devil. We know all of that. And when Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness ended, Jesus returned to this area near the Jordan River, and that's where Jesus heard that John had been arrested by the tetrarch Herod Antipas. And hearing about John's arrest, Jesus decided that things would probably go better for him <laughs> if he got out of the area. And so he did. And so he headed north to the Galilee. And so the first reason Jesus was in the Galilee was seemingly purely circumstantial. The second reason why Jesus was in the Galilee, Matthew says, was to fulfill the words that had been spoken by the prophet Isaiah centuries earlier. Indeed, notice again verses 13 and 16, or through 16, from 13 to 16. And leaving Nazareth, Jesus went and lived in Capernaum, that's the city of Nahum, by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Quote, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people there dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. And for those dwelling in the region and shadow of death on them, a light has dawned. And so leaving Nazareth, which was apparently his first stop in the Galilee, he went from there to Capernaum. In fact, uh, as you read the Gospels, you, you see that Jesus made that his home. In fact, in, in the Gospels, it's sometimes referred to as his home. There was a house, or they talked about him. He went to the house in Capernaum. That was where, by the way, where James and John and Peter and Andrew were from. Nazareth was the place where Jesus grew up, but Capernaum was the town that he made as his uh, headquarters or his, if you like, his uh, base of operations while doing ministry in the Galilee. And then it says that, uh, that this was the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, which we, you might scratch your head about that. But Zebulun is a, refu a reference to the ancient Is Israelite tribal territory that made up the western region of what we know as the Galilee. In fact, Nazareth was located in that territory, in the territory of Zebulun. And then Naphtali is a, is a reference to the ancient Israelite tribal territory that makes up the northern region of what we know as the Galilee. Indeed, it is there that uh, in the territory of Naphtali that the town of Capernaum is located on the northern shores, right on the lake of the Sea of Galilee. And Matthew says that uh, Jesus, Jesus is coming into the Galilee, into the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah in verse 15, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. This is exactly where he went. <laughs> the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, the Galilee of the Gentiles, the people dwelling in darkness there have seen a great light because they've seen Jesus. And for those dwelling in the region of the shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. Or if you like, the rising of the sun has risen over them, over the eastern horizon. It's interesting, in 19... 14, Linda and Victoria and I went to Israel. In fact, there was, well, in addition to us, 10 others from Holy Cross that went. It was, for me, uh, by far the most extraordinary experience of my life. 
to finally what um, about I think I was 51 years old or 50, 51, to finally go and see the places that I had been reading about for years. And we went to Capernaum and Nazareth and all of these places. But when we were in Tiberias, which is right in the center of the lake on the western shore, we were told by our tour guide, now the sun is going to rise and tomorrow morning is going to be a completely cloudless day. And sun rises at 6 o'clock something in the morning, right? Uh, and, and, um, and so I got up to see this sunrise over the lake, over the Sea of Galilee. I, I don't know where the girls were, but I, I was there. <laughs> and it was extraordinary. But when I got out there, and there were a few others, it still was dark and the sun had not come up over the mountains that are on the eastern side of the lake. And then all of a sudden that glimmer, that spark, and then the whole sky lighting up. And the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light, Jesus. And for those dwelling in the region and shadow of death, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, right where I was standing on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, on them the light has dawned. And so that's what Jesus was doing in the Galilee. And why he went there was to be a light and to deliver the people who were living there from spiritual darkness. And delivering people from spiritual darkness is what Jesus is still doing today for people like you and people like me. Indeed, Jesus wasn't Light only for those living in the Galilee 2,000 years ago. Jesus is the light of the world, and he was the light of the world both then and now. He is the light of the world. In fact, that's how he describes himself in the Gospel of John. John chapter 8 and verse 12, Jesus d didn't say, I was the light. <laughs> Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And whoever follows me will not walk or live in darkness, but will have the light of life. Or if you like, will have light to live by. And that's what we need. We're always turning on lights. Can you imagine what it would be like in your house if you couldn't turn on the lights? We need light even when it's dark. I always appreciated something that C.S. Lewis said in a lecture delivered to the Socratic Club in 1945. He said this, I believe in the sun not, because I, not only because I can see it, but because by it, I can see everything else. Listen to that. I believe in the sun not only because I can see the sun, but because by the sun I can see everything else. And we believe in Jesus not only because he himself is a shining and bright light, but because by his light we can see everything else and for what it truly is. To see things the way that God sees things, which is a true way of seeing things. And so that's the first thing. Jesus is the light that delivers us from darkness. Secondly, Jesus is the light that shows us the way. Notice again, beginning at verse 18. And while Jesus was walking by on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who he would later call Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. They were standing in shallow water and they would throw this round net that had um, weights all around the circumference of it. This was one of the several techniques that fishermen used. And we usually think of fishing, we think of fishing poles and fishing lines. Uh, and that, but that wasn't the normal way. They, they did a lot of net fishing, both from boats and from even close in, 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 um, in um, uh, shallow water. And so they were, they were casting these nets. And then the nets would go down on the fish and then they would pull them in. Uh, what one com commentator mentioned that uh, uh, this was a lot of work and it, always, it wasn't always uh, very fruitful. <laughs> and I 
It, was, it didn't seem hard for me to believe that because I didn't know if that this was the very good way to fish. But anyway, they were doing that. And Jesus comes along the shore. They were casting a net into the sea. Verse 19, and Jesus said to them, Hey, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, for Jesus first met Andrew and Peter in Judea. In fact, John goes into some detail about that first meeting. And so it was, this was not the first time that they had met Jesus, but this seems to be the first time that he formally calls them. And so in verse 19, he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. In verse 21, and then going on from there, now it's Jesus and Peter and Andrew, his brother. And going on from there, they, he saw Jesus saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, and they were mending the nets because of what the fishing they did the night before. And so now they're back and they're making sure that the nets will be ready for the next, next uh, fishing expedition. And so they were in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called to them. What did he say? Probably the same thing. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men, fishers of people. And immediately, verse 22, they left the boat and their father and followed him. And verse 23, and Jesus went all throughout the Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. And so Jesus is the light that shows us the way. Indeed, he showed the way to Peter. It's very simple. Uh, just, you, you want to know the way? <laughs> it's this way. Follow me. Walk in my way. Walk this way. Follow me. And they did it. They responded. Now, not everybody responds, right? Jesus said many are called, but few are chosen. And who are the chosen? Well, the chosen are those who answer the call. If you want to, want to know whether you're chosen, ask yourself, am I answering the call? It's not difficult. And so he showed uh, the way to Peter and Andrew, and then he showed the way to James and John. In fact, we read in another passage, I think Luke chapter 5, that actually the, 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 these, all of these guys knew each other. Peter and Andrew, James and John were diff from different families, but they were actually business partners in the fishing business. And so Jesus showed the way to James and John, said, follow me, and they did. And then Jesus showed the way to the people in the Galilee. Notice again, verse 23, and Jesus went with his disciples all through the Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. It's estimated that at the in the time of Jesus and at this time, about which we're reading, there were approximately 300,000 people that lived in the Galilee, located in approximately 200 towns and villages. So Jesus had lots of places to stop off and to teach in their synagogues or proclaim the gospel. In fact, in verse 17, Jesus picks up right where John left off. Now John's in prison in Judea. And Jesus picks up his message and says, repent, change your mind, change your life, turn from the things that you're doing now and turn to the living God for the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom, in other words, the kingdom is so close you can reach out and touch it. And you can see it with your own eyes because the king of the kingdom is right before your eyes. And so he proclaimed the gospel and then he healed every disease and every affliction, giving people an illustration, showing people what it's like in the kingdom. There's no sickness in the kingdom. There's no blindness. Jesus healed the blind. There's no death. Jesus raised the dead. There's no palsy or paralysis. Jesus raised those who were paralyzed. 
There's no any of that in Jesus. In fact, it's very interesting. He healed every affliction. In fact, there was, if you came to Jesus, he wouldn't have said, you know, um, I'm going to need to refer you to someone else on that. <laughs> he healed every affliction. God come in the flesh. And Jesus is still showing the way because Jesus is the way. He wasn't the way then. He was the way then, and he is the way now. As he told his disciples on the night that he was betrayed, John chapter 14 and verse 6, I am the way. I am the way. I'm the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so Jesus is the light that delivers from darkness, the light that shows us the way. I wonder, are you walking in that light? And are you following in his way? C.S. Lewis again, in a, another book, The Great Divorce, he wrote this. He said, I don't think that all who choose the wrong way perish. But their deliverance comes by getting back on the right way. <laughs> I don't think that all who choose the wrong way perish, but their deliverance from perishing comes by getting back on the right way. When I read that the other day, it made me think of Jesus' words in another place. I think you've probably heard them. In Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 13. Jesus said, enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way, the road, is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. I wonder which way are you on and where is it taking you? Let us pray. It's so interesting, Lord, that you this um, one way or the other. There's light and there's darkness. Once I was blind, now I see. I was lost, but I'm found. There is a broad road that leads to destruction, a narrow road that leads to life. Many are on the broad road, few are on the narrow roads, few find life. In other words, Lord, do we have what um, some of us don't like to do, and that is we have to make decisions. We have to make decisions about things. And what we sometimes don't think about is that time is pressing on day after day, week after week, month after month. And some of us, Lord, who are older know how fast that time goes. And to imagine that we have unlimited time, that if we're on the wrong way, that we have all the time we could possibly need to get on the right way, that's a deception. As Euripides said, debt, death is a debt we all must pay and, and the time comes when no decisions can any longer be made but the decisions are what we maybe have decided or not decided is set in stone and that's it. And so this is the time of testing and this is the time of decision. This is the time to turn to you, to hear your voice and not only hear it, but respond to it. And so, Lord, help all of us. God, Lord, I, I pray there would, wouldn't be anyone who wouldn't, who would hear and not respond, but respond and make the Son with whom you're well pleased, Lord of everything. May that be true in my life and true in all of our lives, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen.